It's March the 9th. Let's read the Bible. Friends, welcome back to this year-long journey from Genesis to Revelation in just one year. So glad to have you with us. We are in the book of Deuteronomy. Got this note the other day from somebody who said, really enjoyed you reading. This is helping me to know how to pronounce some of the Bible names. God bless. Well, as I've told you, and you know, when we were in the book of Numbers, there was a whole lot of names and some of them easy and some of them not so easy. And uh, my attitude is say them loud, say them fast and just keep on going. Now, here's one way you can help us. And that is by recommending to your friends these Bible bus videos. Let's read the Bible videos. And uh, a friend, my buddy Chris, uh, put this. I just happened to see this and I thought I'd share it with you. This is You know, he shared one of the videos, and he said, still loving this Bible bus journey I'm on with Pastor Ray Pritchard. If you haven't joined or you would like to, then just go to keepbelieving.com, Facebook, YouTube, or Rumble. You can also listen on Apple, Google, or Spotify Plus. It's absolutely free. Well, Chris, thank you so much, and I hope you will help us out by sharing these videos because there's, we all know, the, 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 the best endorsement is a satisfied customer. If you've enjoyed these videos, let your friends know, and let's get let's fill up the Bible bus with more people who want to know God's Word. Now, today, this is Deuteronomy uh, chapters 4, 5, and 6. Now, we started yesterday in the book of Deuteronomy, the last book of the Pentateuch, the first five books, the five books of Moses. Deuteronomy uh, literally in Greek means the second law. Remember, I said the first version of the law was given at Mount Sinai, but that whole generation, because they didn't believe God, they died in the wilderness. So what you have now is a very young nation, and the adults in this, well, the adults who are around at this moment are all under the age of 40. Their parents died somewhere in the wilderness, and so now Moses, near the end of his life, while the people of God are on the eastern side of the Jordan River, he gives them a restatement of the law, knowing they're about to cross the Jordan and face off against the Canaanites of Jericho and fight a bunch of battles, but eventually they're going to settle down. So Deuteronomy is a repeat of the law of God with some history lessons thrown in. Here is the outline of the book, four words beginning with the letter R. Remember, respond, review, Renew. Remember chapters 1 through 5. Respond chapter 6 through 11. Review chapters 12 through 26. And then re- renew, meaning renew the covenant, chapters 27 through 34. Now, today, chapters 4, 5, and 6. Chapter 4, remember God's blessings. Chapter 5, we repeat the Ten Commandments. Chapter 6, a call to relay the truth to your children and to your children's children and to the generations yet to come. So, Lord, we pray, speak to us as we read your word. May it not just be words that we read or hear, but may these be words of life that change us as we hear them. In Jesus' name, amen. Deuteronomy chapter 4, remember God's blessings. Now, Israel, listen to the statutes and ordinances I am teaching you to follow so that you may live, enter, and take possession of the land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you. You must not add anything to what I command you or take anything away from it so that you may keep the commands of the Lord your God I am giving you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor, for the Lord your God destroyed every one of you who followed Baal of Peor. But you who have remained faithful to the Lord your God are all alive today. Look, I have taught you statutes and ordinances as the Lord my God has commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to possess. Carefully follow them, for this will show your wisdom and understanding in the eyes of the peoples. When they hear about all these statutes, they will say, This great nation is indeed a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God near to it, as the Lord our God is to us, whenever we call to him? And what great nation has righteous statutes and ordinances like this entire law I set before you today. Only, only be on your guard and diligently watch yourselves 
so that you don't forget the things your eyes have seen and so that they don't slip from your mind as long as you live. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren. The day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, the Lord said to me, Assemble the people before me, and I will let them hear my words so that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and may instruct their children. You came near and stood at the base of the mountain, a mountain blazing with fire into the heavens and enveloped in a totally black cloud. Then the Lord spoke to you from the fire. You kept hearing the sound of the words, but you didn't see a form. There was only a voice. He declared his covenant to you. He commanded you to follow the Ten Commandments, which he wrote on two stone tablets. At that time, the Lord commanded me to teach you statutes and ordinances for you to follow in the land you were about to cross into and possess. Diligently watch yourselves, because you did not see any form on the day the Lord spoke to you out of the fire at Horeb. So you don't act corruptly and make an idol for yourselves in the shape of any figure, a male or female form, or the form of any animal on the earth, any winged creature that flies in the sky, any creature that crawls on the ground, or any fish in the waters under the earth. When you look to the heavens and see the sun, moon, and stars, all the stars in the sky, do not be led astray to bow and worship to them and serve them. The Lord your God has provided them for all people everywhere under heaven. But the Lord selected you and brought you out of Egypt's iron furnace to be a people for your inheritance as you are today. The Lord was angry with me on your account. He swore that I would not cross the Jordan and enter the good land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. I won't be crossing the Jordan because I'm going to die in this land, but you are about to cross over and take possession of this good land. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you and make an idol for yourselves in the shape of anything he has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When you have children and grandchildren and have been in the land a long time, and if you act corruptly, make an idol in the form of anything, and do what is evil in the sight of the Lord your God, angering him, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that you will quickly perish from the land you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. You will not live long there, but you will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be reduced to a few survivors among the nations where the Lord your God will drive you. There you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone which cannot see, hear, eat, or smell. But from there you will search for the Lord your God, and you will find him when you seek him with all your heart and all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you in the future, you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. He will not leave you destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors that he swore to them by oath because the Lord your God is a compassionate God. Indeed, ask about the earlier days that preceded you from the day God created mankind on the earth and from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything like this great event ever happened or has anything like it been heard of? Has a people heard God's voice speaking from the fire as you have and lived or has a God attempted to go and take a nation as, as his own out of another nation by trial, signs, wonders, and war, by a strong hand and an outstretched arm, by great terrors, as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? You were shown these things so that you would know that the Lord is God. There is no other besides him. He lets you hear his voice from heaven to instruct you. He showed you his great fire on earth, and you heard his words from the fire. Because he loved your ancestors, he chose their descendants after them and brought you out of Egypt by his presence and great power to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you and to bring you in and give you their land as an inheritance as is now taking place today. Recognize and keep in mind that the Lord is God in heaven above and on earth below. There is no other. Keep his statutes and commands, which I am giving you today so that you and your children after you may prosper, and so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Then Moses set apart three cities across the Jordan to the east. Someone could flee there who committed manslaughter, killing his neighbor accidentally without previously hating him. He could flee to one of these cities and stay alive. Bees are in the wilderness on the plateau land belonging to the Reubenites, Ramoth and Gilead belonging to the Gadites, or Golan in Bashan, belonging to the Manassites. This is the law 
Moses gave to the Israelites. These are the decrees, statutes, and ordinances Moses proclaimed to them after they came out of Egypt to cross the Jordan in the valley facing Baal Peor, Beth Peor, in the land of King Sihon of the Amorites. He lived in Heshbon, and Moses and the Israelites defeated him after they came out of Egypt. They took possession of his land in the land of Og, king of Bashan, the two Amorite kings who were across the Jordan to the east, from Aroer on the rim of the Arnon Valley, as far as Mount Sion, that is Hermon, and all the Arabah on the east side of the Jordan, as far as the Dead Sea below the slopes of Pisgah. So then, Deuteronomy 5. Now we're going to get the repetition of the Ten Commandments. Remember, second law being repeated for this new generation. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Israel, listen to the statutes and ordinances I am proclaiming as you hear them today. Learn and follow them carefully. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. He did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face from the fire on the mountain. At that time, I was standing between the Lord and you to report the word of the Lord to you because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. Do not have other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself in the shape of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. Do not bow in worship to them and do not serve them because I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, bringing the consequences of the father's iniquity on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing faithful love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God because the Lord will not leave anyone unpunished who misuses his name. Be careful to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. You are to labor six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do not do any work. You, your son or daughter, your male or female slave, your ox or donkey, any of your livestock, or the resident alien who lives within your city gates, so that your male and female slaves may rest as you do. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand, and an outstretched arm. This is why the Lord your God has commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and so that you may prosper in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give dishonest testimony against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's wife or desire your neighbor's house his field, his male or female slave, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The Lord spoke these commands in a loud voice to the entire assembly from the fire, cloud, and total darkness on the mountain. He added nothing more. He wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. All of you approached me with your tribal leaders and elders when you heard the voice from the darkness. And while the mountain was blazing with fire, you said, look, The Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today, we have seen that God speaks with a person, yet he still lives. But now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For who, out of all humanity, has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the fire as we have and live? Go near and listen to everything the Lord our God says. Then, You can tell us everything the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard your words when you spoke to me. He said to me, I have heard the words that these people have spoken to you. Everything they have said is right. If only they had such a heart to fear me and keep all my commands always so that they and their children would prosper forever. Go and tell them, return to your tents. But you stand here with me and I will tell you every command, the statutes and ordinances you are to teach them so that they may follow them in the land I am giving them to possess. Be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You are not to turn aside to the right or the left. Follow the whole instruction the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live, prosper, and have a long life in the land you will possess. I don't know how God could make it any clearer. If you disobey, 
you'll pay the price. And so will your kids and grandkids. But if you obey, you'll live long and prosper. Be greatly blessed. Couldn't be any clearer. Chapter 6. Now we're going to talk about relaying the truth of God to the next generation. This is the command, the statutes and the ordinances. The Lord your God has commanded me to teach you so that you may follow them in the land you are about to enter and possess. Do this so that you may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life by keeping all his statutes and commands. I am giving you your son and your grandson and so that you may have a long life. Listen, Israel, and be careful to follow them so that you may prosper and multiply greatly because the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Listen, Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words that I am giving you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your city gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he would give you a land with large and beautiful cities that you did not build, houses full of every good thing that you did not fill them with, cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you eat and are satisfied, be careful not to forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. Fear the Lord your God, worship him, and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. For the Lord your God who is among you is a jealous God. Otherwise, the Lord your God will become angry with you and obliterate you from the face of the earth. Do not test the Lord your God as you tested him and Messiah. Carefully observe the commands of the Lord your God, the decrees and statutes he has commanded you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight so that you may prosper and so that you may enter and possess the good land the Lord your God swore to give your ancestors by driving out all your enemies before you as the Lord has said. When your son asks you in the future, what is the meaning of the decrees, statutes, and ordinances that the Lord our God has commanded you? Tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand. Before our eyes, the Lord inflicted great and devastating signs and wonders on Egypt, on Pharaoh, and on all his household. But he brought us from there in order to lead us in and give us the land he swore to our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to follow all these statutes and to fear the Lord our God for our prosperity always and for our preservation as it is today. Righteousness will be ours if we are careful to follow every one of these commands before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. One of the greatest burdens Christian parents have is the burden of what will happen to our our kids after us, after we're gone. Will they still follow the Lord? You know, I don't know any way to guarantee because your kids have minds of their own and so do your grandkids. We all know that. You don't really know how your kids are going to turn out or how your grandkids are going to be. There's a way, there is a way to dip the scales in your favor. That is by with your whole heart, from your heart, to follow the Lord. Especially, I think, there's a reason. It says when the son asks his father, Nothing is more important than fathers who have a heart for the Lord, who have a heart of compassion, who have a heart of wisdom, who have a heart of obedience. May God give us dads who truly love the Lord. What I'm saying is, and what's clear in this passage is, these laws, these rules, these statutes, they're not just for us. They're for our kids and they're for our grandkids. I told you before, I started this project uh, as a legacy. to leave. I mean, you get in your 70s and you realize you're not going to be around forever. I want to leave a legacy. Marley and I want to leave a legacy for our kids and grandkids and generations yet to come so that however many years there are till Jesus comes again, that the oncoming generations will know that we love the word of God, that we believed it. We tried to follow it to the best of our ability. 
It's a sacred responsibility you have. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, <laughs> wherever you are, every Christian has responsibility of passing it on, passing on the example, passing it on through prayer, passing it on through godly life, passing it on through through kindness and compassion and the love of Jesus to live in such a way. You remember what Ruth Bell Graham said? What's a saint? A saint is a person who makes it easy to believe in Jesus. So I'm going to just finish right there. I, I think it's important for parents uh, to to live that way. I've told you before, just a few weeks ago, about the Baguma boys, those five wonderful boys of, of David and Heidi Baguma, the picture of David and the five boys and my face up on the, their big screen on their wall that, that Heidi took and, and posted there so that the whole world could see. There's dad and his five boys are watching this reading of the word of God. Well, may, may, may their tribe be multiplied. May their example be multiplied. Oh God, oh God, help us to live today. Help us to be saints who make it easy for others to believe in Jesus. That's our prayer. Go out and have a great day, a wonderful day. Make it easy by your life, through your lips, by your godly example, by the sweetness of your spirit. God help us to make it easy for others to believe in Jesus as they follow our example. Have a great day, folks. Come back tomorrow. We're going to read more in the book of Deuteronomy. See you then. God bless.